Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Illustrate the t-distribution and enumerate its properties and differentiate t-distribution from z-distribution. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. The mean height of Filipino women is 150 centimeters, that is 4 feet and 11 inches tall, with a standard deviation of 5 centimeters. What is the probability that 30 randomly selected women have a mean height shorter than 151 centimeters? So first, let us identify the given. We have here the mean height of Filipino women is 150. So 150 here is our population mean. Standard deviation of 5 centimeters. So this is our sigma. What is the probability that 30 randomly selected? 30 here is our sample. And 151 is the sample mean. Since we are given the sample mean, we're going to use this formula. Let us substitute 151 for x bar, 150 for mu, 5 for sigma, and 30 for our n. And this will give us 1.10. Next, let us sketch the normal curve. Let us locate 1.10. So here is 0, positive 1, and then somewhere here is 1.10. Let us analyze shorter than 151 centimeters, meaning shorter than 1.10. So if it is shorter, then going to the left. We know that half of a normal curve is 0 0.5. So we are just going to look for this area. Let's have our Z table. 1.1 on the first column, it's here. And then 0 on the hundredths digit, it's here. Let us get the intersection. And that is 0 0.3643. This area is from the mean up to 1.3643. 10. Since we need the totality of this shaded region, we are going to add 0 0.5 and 0 0.3643. And this will give us 0 0.8643. Moving two decimal places, going to the right, 1, 2. This is 86.43%. Now let us answer the question, the probability that 30 Randomly selected Filipino women have a mean height shorter than 151 centimeters is 86.43%. Our discussion for today will focus on T distribution. This is also known as a student's T test. Why a student? This is the pen name used by its proponent, and that is. William Seeley Gossett. He developed the distribution in 1908. Gossett was working in Guinness Brewery. He is a mathematician and he was studying the difference between barley yield. It was not financially practical for the company to have a lot of samples that time. And this is the reason behind the birth of the distribution. T-test is used when sample size is small and or when the population variance is unknown and the observations come from a normally distributed population. T-distribution is based on the sample standard deviation S and the formula for this is T is equal to sample mean minus mu all over sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Here are the properties of T distribution. Number one, the T distribution is bell shaped and symmetric about the mean. Number two, the mean, median, and mode of the T distribution are equal and is equal to zero. Number three, the total area under a T-curve is 1 or 100%. Number 4, the tails are asymptotic to the horizontal axis. 
these four properties are quite familiar, right? These are the same properties of Z distribution. Then what is the difference between Z distribution and T distribution? Let me show it. Here is a Z distribution. And this one is a T distribution. You will notice that a T distribution is shorter and has fatter tails. Shorter meaning they have lower peak. And why fatter? Because T distribution have a greater chance for extreme values than normal distribution. Why? Because T distribution is based on a small sample size. That is why the variability is greater than the normal distribution. Another property, there is a different T distribution for each sample size. Meaning, T distribution is a family of curves, each determined by a parameter called the degrees of freedom. Let me explain this further. The degrees of freedom is the number of values that are free to vary in a data set. For instance, we want a mean of 100 and we have 4 slots to fill. We are free to write any number on the first slot. Let us say we put 98 here. And then on the second slot, we are also free to write any number. Let us say we'll write 99 here. We are also free on the third slot. Let us say I'll put 101 here. Can we put any number on the fourth slot and still have a mean of 100? No, the only number that we can put here is 102. Adding all these four numbers and dividing by 4 will give me a mean of 100. So, from the four slots that we have, the three slots are free to vary. Let's have another one. Let's say you have five slots and you have a particular mean in mind. You are free to write any numbers on four slots, but you have a particular number on the fifth slot to attain the mean that you want. Therefore, when computing for the mean using t-distribution, the degrees of freedom is equal to the sample size minus 1. So, if we have 4 slots, then the degrees of freedom is 4 minus 1, and that will be equal to 3. So, look at here. The 3 slots here are free to vary. So, again, the degrees of freedom is the number of values that are free to vary in a data set. Number seven, as the degrees of freedom increases, the T distribution approaches the normal distribution. So let's have a normal distribution. This one is a T distribution with degrees of freedom equal to three. This one is a T distribution with degrees of freedom equal to five. And this one is a t-distribution with degrees of freedom equal to 10. When the degrees of freedom is equal to 30, then the distribution almost matches the z-distribution. That is why with large sample size such as n is greater than or equal to 30, we use z-distribution. So once again, as degrees of freedom increases, the t-distribution approaches normal distribution. Number eight, the variance is always greater than one. It is equal to the degrees of freedom divided by the degrees of freedom minus two. As degrees of freedom increases, the variance approaches one. Let's have an example. So, degrees of freedom is equal to 20. Let us compute for the variance. So, here is our formula. Let us substitute 20 for our degrees of freedom. And 20 minus 2 is equal to 18. 20 divided by 18 in lowest term, both divisible by 2, is 10 over 9. And this is equal to 1.11. Let's have another example. This time, let's have degrees of freedom equal to 30. Again, let us compute for the variance. Let us substitute 30 for our degrees of freedom. 
30 minus 2 is 28. Both are divisible by 2. This is 15 over 14. And this is equal to 1.07. So you notice, as I increase the degrees of freedom, my variance approaches 1. Last property, the standard deviation is always greater than 1. In normal distribution, the standard deviation is equal to 1. Let's have an activity, our similarities and differences. All we have to do is to put these characteristics in their proper column. So the first column is for T distribution. The second one is common to both T and Z distribution. And the third column is for Z distribution. So variance is greater than 1. This is in T distribution. Next one, symmetrical about zero. Both T and Z distributions are symmetrical about zero. Next one, bell shape. Both T and Z are bell shaped. Next one, unknown variance case, meaning you do not know the variance of the population. So this is T distribution. Next one, the variance is equal to one. This is z distribution another one is standard deviation is greater than one this is t distribution shorter curve with fatter tails also t distribution asymptotic to the x-axis both t and z distribution distribution depends on the degrees of freedom this is T distribution. Standard deviation is equal to 1. Z distribution. The mean, the median, and the mode are all equal and equal to 0. Both T and Z distribution. Area under the curve is 1. Both on T and Z distribution. For my quick tips, if you are confused if it is a Z distribution or T distribution, then this chart will help you. The first thing that you need to know is to check if the distribution is normally distributed. If the answer is yes, then ask yourself again, is the sample size greater than or equal to 30? If the answer is yes, then you are going to use Z distribution. If the answer to the sample size greater than or equal to 30 is no, then look if the population standard deviation is given. If it is given, then still you are going to use Z distribution. If not, then you are going to use T distribution. If the answer to the first question, the distribution is normally distributed, is no or there is nothing written on the problem, then look for the sample size. If it is greater than or equal to 30, then use Z distribution because CLT tells us that if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then the distribution tends to be normally distributed. Now, if the answer is no, then neither Z distribution or T distribution can be used. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. Coconut trees are classified into two main types, tall and dwarf. The average height of tall coconut trees is 55 feet. A random sample of 25 tall coconut trees has a mean of 57 feet with a standard deviation of 2 feet. Let us identify the following. First one, the population mean. So it says here the average height of tall coconut trees is 55 feet. So we have here 55 feet. Next one, sample size, a random sample of 25. 
Next one, sample mean has a mean of 57 feet. This 57 feet is referring to the sample. So our sample mean is 57 feet. Sample standard deviation with a standard deviation of 2 feet. Again, this is referring to the sample. So we have here 2 feet. Degrees of freedom, if our sample size is 25, then degrees of freedom is 25 minus 1. So this is equal to 24. Next, for the variance, our formula is degrees of freedom divided by degrees of freedom minus 2. And 24 minus 2 is 22. 24 divided by 22 is 1.09. And last one, Z or T distribution should be used. Since our sample size is less than 30 and the population standard deviation is not given, instead we have sample standard deviation, then the correct distribution to use is T distribution. Gets? Our next lesson is identifying percentiles using T table.